Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Karibuni tena katika kipindi chetu cha Al Muslima. I'm your host Ustada Aisha Muhammad Abdul Khair. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, wa in khiftum an la tuqsitu fil yatama fa ankihu ma taba lakum min al nisa'i matna wa thulatha wa ruba'. Wa in khiftum an la ta'dilu fa wahidatan aw ma malakat aymanikum. Thalika adna an la ta'lu. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, and if you fear that you shall not be able to deal justly with the orphan girls, then marry other women of your choice, two or three or four. But if you fear that you shall not be able to deal justly with them, then only one or slaves that give that uh, or slaves that your right hands possesses. That is nearer to prevent from doing injust. This is our topic today, ala wahia polygamy. What is polygamy? How do we deal with polygamy? What are the coping mechanism of polygamy? And how can we deal best with it? Inshallah, we have our guest, Lula Aginga, who comes from a very well-known group as Beyond Polygamy. Welcome to our session today. Thank you, Ustada. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam habibti. So we know polygamy as something that was practiced by our ancestors, our fathers, our grandfathers. It is a setup that has been there in our culture, in our tradition. But now we want to talk about the uniqueness of polygamy in the Islamic way, or rather in the Islamic lifestyle. Uh, so I'm going to give you, inshallah, that opportunity so that we can discuss it better. And also we would like to discuss uh, polygamy in such a way that uh, we, we, we see how best we can deal with the perception of the Muslim women in the world today. Polygamy is being, yani it's a stigma uh, among the Muslim community. It is something that is not well received. It is something that the, no, nobody wants to discuss or something that we, it's better for us to put, to put it under the carpet, you know, just forget about it. So I'm going to give you that platform, inshallah. Introduce yourself, introduce your group, and then we see from there. Um, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, once again, my name is Lula Aginga. Mm -hmm. A little bit of background on myself. Um, I embraced Islam about 26 years ago. Mashallah. And, um, and I got married almost immediately after that. Mm -hmm. And um, I am in a polygamous relationship. Um, I have been in polygamy for about 25 years. Mm -hmm. And... Um, I will speak a bit about our group. Mm -hmm. Our group is known as uh, Beyond Polygamy. Yeah. We came together because we found that there is a gap in, um, in our society. Uh, A, there are very many women who are in polygamous relationships and yeah. polygamous marriages, mm -hmm. uh, but there's a lot of stigma attached to it mm -hmm. and a lot of pain. Mm -hmm. And um, the reason we really wanted to do this is so that women don't suffer. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of suffering in it mm -hmm. uh, for various reasons. We didn't want women to suffer in, um, because of the circumstances that polygamy dealt them. Mm -hmm. So we came together as a group and the group has really grown over the years. We have been, we've been there for about 10 years mm -hmm. and um, we have um, managed to accommodate very many women, mm -hmm. either first, second, third or fourth. And uh, I use the terminology first, second, third or fourth sparingly because you can't you're all wives we're just talking in terms of who got married first and who got married after that um yeah so that is it that was the intention of the group mm -hmm. and we came together mm -hmm. so that we can look for some sort of um a bond mm -hmm. among the women mm -hmm. and um a sort of acceptance mm -hmm. and um, we deal with women who have been in polygamy mm -hmm. may, may have been divorced or widowed mm -hmm. in the same situation right. or are still currently living in polygamy that's perfect. Mm -hmm. So you've been in this for almost 10 years. Yes. And of course, there's a lot you have seen yes. in our society today. As an outsider, somebody who's not been in polygamy, and uh, what I see is that our women today, the society today, you know, Allah says in the Quran, ظَهَرَ الْفَسَادِ بِمَا كَسَبَتْ أَيْدِ النَّاسِ it is something that is brought about by us ourselves. So we find uh, that people wako stigmatize sana na polygamy. Mm. Yeah? Women are, are, are ready to live 
a secret polygamous marriage. No. Women and men are ready to do zina, no. adultery, no. just to avoid that polygamy setup. Mm. You know, mm. women in who are married like they they they're not in a polygamous. They're so selfish mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to let their man go ahead and marry. So it may be a society that nafsi nafsi mm. kila mtu na nafsi yake. Do you think the way I think mm. that polygamy can be the reason? Oh, uh, 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 polygamy is the is, is the is the dua mustaj, or rather, it's the solution to what is happening in the world today, in terms of breakage of families, mm. in terms of divorce, in terms of uh, drug addiction, in terms of you know whatever it is that, that, that we are going through today, as a mus Muslim umma. Um. First and foremost, um, I'd like to make something very clear. We don't encourage, we don't go out to say um, we're encouraging people to get married because that's a perception that's there among the ladies that uh, we encourage men go out and get married. We deal with women who already find themselves in the situation or are about to get into the situation for various reasons. I'll say women get married in polygamous situations by default, as in you don't know. Your husband marries another woman mm -hmm. and you discover he's married another woman. Mm -hmm. Or I'm divorced, I'm vulnerable, mm -hmm. I, I need a man, I, I, need, I need family, they mm -hmm. want for family and, and belonging. So women get married for that. It could be financial, it could be this, the, the background, you know. A woman who's unmarried in some societies is looked down upon negatively. Mm -hmm. So we incorporate all these women. Mm -hmm. um, to answer your question about whether it is, um, whether it is the answer mm -hmm. to the problems that we have in society, um, I think a lot of uh, what happens within a polygamous setup, it, it depends on the man. Mm -hmm. uh, is the man just? Mm -hmm. um, how does he treat his wife? Even when she's alone, mm -hmm. how good is this man to his wife? Mm -hmm. Is she comfortable? Is she mm -hmm. happy? Mm -hmm. So that by the time he incorporates another wife, mm -hmm. this other wife doesn't feel like there's a problem. Mm -hmm. Because if he comes in with another woman mm -hmm. and there was already problems in the previous marriage, mm -hmm. then it doesn't become a solution. Mm -hmm. But yes, if the marriage chapter is looked into Islamically mm -hmm. and um, people follow the norms, the, the rules that are there governing the polygamy, I think it would be a solution, yes. Barakallahu fiq. Barakallahu fiq. Okay, um, Lula, for a polygamous marriage to work, mm -hmm. what does it take? I'll say it, I'll speak from the woman's perspective. Yeah. Uh, because the man, I think one, one problem I think we have as women is trying to, I'll not use the word control, but sort of decide how the man is going to live when he's in a marriage. Mm -hmm. And that becomes a problem. Mm -hmm. um, I think for me as an individual, the understanding that this man has a mind of his own mm -hmm. and will run his life mm -hmm. according to what he feels mm -hmm. took me some time. But mm -hmm. when I finally gathered that, then I realized it's up to me to be happy. Mm -hmm. to make my life the way I want it in a marriage. Mm -hmm. So I think if we can focus mainly on um, basically how best for you to live within the marriage, it, that you, you have choices. Yeah. When you find yourself in a polygamous relationship, mm -hmm. a husband and wife situation, when I say relationship, you have a choice to stay or to leave. The problem comes in if you decide to stay and then it's haywire. Mm -hmm. You know, everything, you're fighting, you're crying, you're throwing things, you're causing problem in the family. Um, that's what we try to avoid within the group. Mm -hmm. Because we realized uh, women spend a lot of their time and effort um, trying to swing things in their direction. We always, as human beings, hope that things work for us. Mm -hmm. And in, in the eventual context, you cause more problems. It's more harm than good. Yeah, so yeah. it becomes... Yeah, so it becomes yeah. havoc. It mm, becomes havoc. haywire. Yeah. There's mm. crying, there's tears, mm. there's yeah. fighting. Yes. There's a lot of bitterness. There's bitterness. There's pain. Yes, there's all oh, the pain. The pain. The pain, and the, the woman, anguish. And the woman feels that she was not good enough. Now that, 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 that comes almost number one, especially yeah. for the woman who is already found in the marriage. Mm -hmm. And I think many women who don't want their husbands to marry, mm -hmm. there's the fear of being or feeling inferior. Mm -hmm. I wasn't good enough for you. Mm -hmm. You married her because I have flaws in my life. Mm -hmm. You know, you brought her so that she can do the things that I couldn't do for you. Mm -hmm. So getting her out of that psychological mm -hmm. killer, it's a killer path because mm -hmm. you kill your self-esteem completely mm -hmm. into, into nothing. Mm -hmm. That is the hardest bit 
for her to realize she's fantastic. She's just, mm -hmm. she's fine mm -hmm. with or without this man. Mm -hmm. She's a wonderful creation. Yes. That's the biggest problem. Mashallah. Yes. So I think uh, when it comes to it, it's all about the woman. It's all about you. You, you should realize that I am a unique person. Yeah. Uh, whatever it is she has come with, yeah. that is her. That's her. So we should all live, uh, we, sh we should all coexist together in the, in the better uh, of the husband maybe or the family, mm. uh, you know, mm. uh, at the end of the day. So inshallah, um, we're going to take a break. Okay. Uh, inshallah, when we come back, we're going to discuss more about, uh, of course, the coping mechan mechanism yes. in the polygamous setup, inshallah. Yes. Yeah, inshallah. Inshallah. Uh, Alhamdulillah to Miss Mengi. At least it was a very good introduction to polygamous. Uh, please don't go anywhere. Inshallah, we're going to take a break. And when we come back, we're going to discuss more on the coping mechanism, the way I have said, and also about the secret marriage in polygamous. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to our program. Inshallah, we are going to discuss about uh, the uniqueness of polygamy in, in, in an Islamic setup, inshallah. And also we are going to talk about the the coping mechanism in polygamy, inshallah. So, Ukhti, uh, there's something that uh, it always comes across us. We always say one of the challenges, one of the reasons why polygamy is not working, it's the process which the men take, the husbands take, when it comes to getting into polygamy. You know, this man wants to be in a polygamous, ma polygamous marriage, but now he has this fear for, of, the, of the wife. Uh, fear of breaking the, the marriage, fear of losing his children, Unona. So he ends up doing things secretly. Or he ends up, uh, you know, not doing it well. I, I, I believe it's the process. So when he's here, he doesn't know what, he, he doesn't do it right. When he's in the second wave, he doesn't do it right. So what can you say about that? Um, to answer your question, the issue of the man, uh, the process of the man, getting into the secret marriages and things like that. As you said, the men usually have um, very different ways of approaching it. Some men come out openly and tell their wives, I'm getting married to another woman. Some men do it secretly and keep it secret for a very long time. So because we do not, um, whichever way it is broken to a woman, there's pain. Yeah. Even if he takes you and tells you, okay, this is the woman I'm marrying and this is, there's still pain. And even if you discover tomorrow that he got married two years back, to your best friend, they're still pain. Sure. So uh, for women to understand that the pain is very unique, but it's still the same, pain. it's still the same pain, is very important for us. And how you deal with it. Because, um, with the pain. yes, after the man marries you, whether you're first, second, third, or fourth, there are changes. Mm -hmm. There are changes in the fact that his attention is divided. His uh, resources will also be divided, no matter how rich or poor this man is, and um, how much time he spends with you. You know, so some women go through neglect, financial, physical, emotional. Um, others thrive on it, you know. Some have power, they pull the man to their side. And this can happen either or. It could be the first, second, third, or fourth wife who gets the benefit. Mm -hmm. And um, unique to this situation is that for you as a Muslim woman, you need to understand that your husband can love another woman and marry her. And it is halal. It's halal. So we need to accept it as women and i think that acceptance is the hardest bit for us mm -hmm. we never want that to possession take it. his I, mind his mind yes he's not yours no why he, didn't you get him i mean if he left his mother's home yes eh? he, he he can uh, i mean if i mean if you can sh if he can share if his mother can share you you know then i think you can show you can share him with somebody else but you can't compare him to your mother yeah exactly so women feel we tend to feel and this is all over the world that I married him, find your own man. No, not in Islam. Not in Islam. Mm. And that's what we need to understand and accept. And I think um, one of the beauties of Islam when I embraced Islam mm -hmm. was that Allah is so categorical. He's so clear. Mm -hmm. And it's a matter of you understanding and accepting. Mm -hmm. And understanding that a man's mentality is not the same as a woman. Mm -hmm. He has the capacity to love more than one woman. Mm -hmm. And he has the capacity to look after one, more than one woman. Mm -hmm. Yes. MashaAllah. I remember there's a lady who told me, Ustada, la yukalifullahu nafsa. Naam. No. Like, Allah kalifishi nafsi. Yeah. So, no. so there are things I can put up with and there are things I cannot put up with. No. So polygamy is not something that I can put up with. No. But I, f I believe in the 21st century today, mm -hmm. you have to put up with it, whether you like it or not. No. In each and every home of a Muslim home, 
We have more than five or six girls in yes. a family. These are Afifat, Tayyibat, Salihat. They're girls that were brought up in, a, in an Islamic uh, setup. Wakuna imani zako, zao wako. You know, they're good girls. Who is going to marry them? Exactly. That's, that's the question. That's who's going to marry them? That, that if it's not your husband, who's going to marry them? Exactly. So if you think that, uh, I mean, we mu'minuna ikhwa, we're all sisters. At the end of the day, Allah is testing our iman. Allah is testing our ihsan to each other. Yeah. So if we want to build that Islamic society, if we want to bring that unity again, we have to get this thing out of us. Yes, and we it's a to. huge jihad. It is a very big jihad. Yes, because so I believe maybe we, we, we can tell the women, okay, fine, let, we, we can encourage them to let their husband marry, uh -huh. but now we have to come with a mechanism whereby we make sure that these marriages work. You know, you just can't encourage and then the guy doesn't know how to go about it, the woman doesn't know how to go about it. And that's where I think your group is coming in very well. Yes, to for us, we, we focus on the woman finding herself in that marriage, mm -hmm. no matter what your situation is. Mm -hmm. Because situations, as I said, are different. Mm -hmm. And um, every woman has her own story. Mm -hmm. But how do you find your ground? How do you find your footing? You've decided to stay in this marriage. Mm -hmm. Or you are divorced. Mm -hmm. Because even when you're divorced, the implications are still there. You probably have children, mm -hmm. and uh, he still has another wife. Mm -hmm. And whether you like it or not, when there's more, one, more than one woman, even when there's only one woman in a marriage, it's complicated. It is. Yes. It is. So how are you going to cope? Mm -hmm. And as you say, it's also a growing trend. Mm -hmm. It is a growing trend among the men, because there's a need. Mm -hmm. for these women to have stara. Mm -hmm. they are, that's us, that's, mm -hmm. that could be me and you tomorrow. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't know what our situation will be like tomorrow. And you'll true. expect to be accepted mm -hmm. into a family just mm -hmm. the way somebody else was. But I also wanted to point out that um, even the second and the third and the fourth wife, mm -hmm. they come in and they have their mtihan. You know, usually you would think they come in and they're the spoilers and, you know, and they're coming to mess up your life. No, they come in and they have their share of also fighting the their battles, battles. Yeah. yes, yes. Yeah. So we also hold their hands mm -hmm. for them to understand that come in mm -hmm. and find your footing. What is it, what is in there for this, for you in this marriage? Mm -hmm. Yes, so that you feel it's okay to be married to somebody who has another wife. It's okay. Yeah, it's, it's okay. okay. It's yes. Okay. It's not for every man. Mm -hmm. I'll yeah. repeat that. Mm -hmm. But for those who do find themselves marrying another woman, mm -hmm. these women need to be happy. They deserve, they have a right to be happy. Yes. Inshallah. So you think we need more what? In terms of? Um, in, in terms of making this uh, successful. Uh, you know, for it to be uh, understood. Yeah. Uh, for it to be implemented better. Yeah. Uh, we need more of what? More of uh, awareness, more of, you know? Yes. I think we need to uh, talk about it. Openly. Openly. Yes. Okay? Yes. And um, have women come out and speak about it. Yes. It doesn't have to be in our forum. There's mm -hmm. so many other forums I think women can mm -hmm. associate themselves with. Mm -hmm. But if you do want to join us, mm -hmm. you're welcome. Because mm -hmm. we feel it needs to be spoken about mm -hmm. so that we can deal with it. Mm -hmm. Even the men, mm -hmm. they, they talk about it among their own social mm -hmm. circles. But then they need to change their perspective on it and maybe how they treat the women in the marriages. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so only by speaking about it and getting advice and getting some counseling can anybody really deal with this. But let the stigma disappear. The only way for stigma to disappear is for it to be out there to be out and there. to be accepted. Lula, as we've said, uh, our young girls are getting proposal for polygamy from, from married men. Alhamdulillah. So always wana kwa ganaile, what should I expect? Uh, how is the first wife going to react? What are my parents going to say? How is it going to be? You know, there's always that expectation. So as somebody who's been through polygamous and somebody who is having a support group in polygamous marriage, I don't know, what is the expectation? I think the expectations of each person can be very unique to their situation. Mm -hmm. uh, but add my advice, uh, because yes, there's expectation that uh, this other wife will maybe accept me or this man is going to be what I see of him now and um, he's not going to change and everything. Then you get into the marriage and you realize probably the first wife still has much control over him. You don't have that much time with him. Or maybe you're not as happy as you thought you would be mm -hmm. or it is not as, as wonderful mm -hmm. as, as you, you thought, as it, you would thought it would be. I think for every woman when facing marriage, 
uh, humility is a big part of it. Mm -hmm. And I, thought, I think we are forced to humble ourselves in the situation of polygamy. For me, that's a positive. Because uh, when you do get to accept mm -hmm. that another woman mm -hmm. belongs to your man, mm -hmm and he belongs to her, mm -hmm. a lot of humility does come in because now it's not my man, my property and everything. So you sort of have to um, learn to live in a society where it's not all about you. It's not all about me. And I think that's the hardest thing yes. for a woman because <laughs> when I get married... I mean, naturally, the way Allah has created us, life. it's all about me. I want full attention. Yes. I want things to go the way I want. Yes. If it doesn't work out, it can take the highway. Exactly. Yeah. And, and then you maybe take the highway and decide, I just want to go back in there and stay with him. Yeah. You know? So there's a lot of humble pie eating in it. Mm -hmm. uh, but in the long run, I think for women, um, there's a lot of positive growth. Uh, you find yourself in polygamy. You find you have to know how to do things and uh, be your own woman. You start realizing that you have a life without this man mm -hmm. and that um, you've got to be able to govern your life in, in some good decorum. So I think that's very important as well. Mashallah. Yeah. Uh, for me, uh, the way I see it uh, is that uh, men should uh, step up no. their game. No. They should look at what is happening to, the, to our young girls in the society. No. Our young girls have turned to something different mm -hmm. than the norms mm -hmm. that we are used to, the culture we are used to, mm -hmm. the Islamic setup that we are used to. Mm -hmm. So we, we, I personally feel like I encourage them mm. to go for, poly, for, for polygamy. No. So instead of our girl ending up with John mm. Mm. and Peter, mm. Mm, he, he, he can just, you know, I'm steady. Yes. Risky and London and later. Mm. At the end of the day, I remember there's a hadith whereby a man came to Rasul and he said, you know, uh, I mean, things are, things are very bad. My situation is bad. Rasul told him, go and marry. He went to marry. He came back and said, Rasul, it's even worse. Rasul said, go and marry again. So the fourth time when he married, that's the time risky no. So this is a way of Rasul saying that maybe by marrying more, risky mm. tafunguka zaidi. I mean, that's my take when it comes to I agree encourage, with uh, encouraging our Muslim men to marry. Yes, yes I know the fear. Uh, there's this a lot of fear uh, of losing their wives, maybe losing. But you know, if you put your trust in Allah, and you know that you're doing this for the sake of the deen, and you're doing it for the for the maslaha of the ummah, I believe Allah will give you tawfiq in it. I agree Shana. with you, Stada. And um, that that also brings the point about women bashing each other because we get into these marriages and. Mm -hmm. We focus on fighting each other. I'll mm -hmm. fight you because you came into my home and mm -hmm. she'll fight the next person because that one came into the home. We need to stop that. Mm -hmm. It's a culture of self-destruct mm -hmm. and we need to get rid of it. Mm -hmm. Yes. Exactly. And we just accept that in a madunia fana, no. this is just dunya. It's just We're dunya. just here for a while. Yes. Let us please Allah no. subhanahu wa ta'ala through the sabr no. that he's given, I mean through the imtihan that he has given us, no. should be more we should have more sabr, we should have more hikmah no. on how to deal with this. And that's where the uniqueness of Islam comes in, no. in this polygamous setup. SubhanAllah. I mean, there's that. no stone unturned in Islam. True. There's no sol there's no problem without a solution in Islam. No. So if Islam and Allah saw that polygamous was the solution, then we as women should take it up, embrace it, and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the sabr and hikmah, yes. and of course, above all, to give us tawfiq in implementing Amen. it, inshallah. It was lovely to be with you. Same here. Courageously talk about something that the women, uh, the Muslim women today don't want to talk about it. Now, inshallah, we want to see more of you. Yeah. And we encourage more women to come to your group. Inshallah. Uh, so that they can get the professional help. Inshallah. Uh, in their situation, inshallah. Thank inshallah. you very much for being with us and today. Thank you for hosting me. You're welcome, inshallah. Alhamdulillah, we are able to reach the end of our program. Uh, we have benefited a lot from our sister Lula and inshallah we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us tawfiq and to give us the hikmah inshallah and to give us the sabr and the understanding of polygamous in our marriages, in our lives na inshallah katika ummayetu jami'an I was your host Ustada Aisha Muhammad Abdul Khair till next time Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Bien,